Welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here bringing you another video today from the usual location in Jerusalem. Now just before I get into this video I want to make a quick disclaimer or note and that's that I have been working hard recently to make this YouTube channel a more focused experience around a couple of specific topics. I know I've mentioned this before. Um, when I started producing these YouTube videos a couple of years back I was really just playing around with different formats and sort of I'm still doing that to a large extent but now that you know a few people have subscribed I realize that people are expecting videos not about every topic under the sun. So it's an ongoing process I am trying to split out stuff that isn't about Jerusalem and Israel which I think is fascinating. Personally the videos I'm most interested in making are videos about the very interesting going goings on in my locality. Um, so that's a work in progress but I'm making an exception for this video because I think that mental health is such a vitally important topic and rather than set up a channel about just about my mental health journey which I don't think people would be really that interested in I'm going to just put this up on my main channel. I'm doing this video not randomly but rather because I received an email today from someone called uh, Nico and he wrote me a lovely email and Nico's email was super timely because just started resuming taking the Wellbutron. This is the Israeli uh, Hebrew uh, Wellbutron. That's the funny writing for those who can't read uh, Hebrew, but it's the same Wellbutron as uh, you can find in other countries. It's the 300 milligram extended release. I want to just read Nico's email because it was really nice. Nico says, Hi Daniel, how are you? I saw your video about Wellbutrin and your story really touched me since I am in a similar situation. I was recently diagnosed with ADHD, plus I have dysthemia, mild depression. Dysthemia, I, I believe the modern official term is persistent depressive disorder or PDD. I went from venlafaxine, I'm having trouble pronouncing this, to Ramativ and I continued only with Ramativ. Lastly, I got on to Wellbutrin 150 for now, but I started only a few days ago. All these changes were made with my psychiatrist, which is uh, great and what I do as well. Um, I saw that you stopped taking Wellbutrin after doing a great video about it, haha. <laughs> Can I ask what happened? I saw many videos of people taking it for a short period and then changing for something else. Are you taking now other meds for depression and or ADHD? Thank you very much for sharing that video. That was really inspiring. I love these emails. These emails make my day. And if you want to send me an email uh, in the contact tab or in the about tab of the YouTube channel is an email address. I, and I don't exaggerate. They truly make my day. Um, so Nico's email, he he asked why I stopped taking Wellbutrin. So I'm going to seize on this moment to do a video about it. So the reason I stopped taking Wellbutrin, I was on 300 milligrams, which is for these days, sort of the maximum dose. Now, technically I have read about people being on 450 milligrams of Wellbutrin. Before I go any further with this video, and unfortunately I'm this not doing this disclaimer in chronological order, I'm not a doctor, I'm just a uh, person taking these medications like a lot of other folks on YouTube. And therefore, if you do have concerns um, about your own medical history or what you should be taking, definitely raise those with your uh, doctor. 300 milligrams, as I was mentioning, is for a lot of people the maximum dose of Wellbutrin, even though some folks are taking 450. If you put in 450 milligrams Wellbutrin to Reddit or on YouTube here, you will see people taking that dose. Now, something I think is interesting is the reason that a lot of doctors and, and psychiatrists stop at 300 is I've read data that the seizure risk, which is why Wellbutrin was pulled from the market in the first place years ago, um, gets a lot higher after 450 milligrams and above. So sir, I don't think you'll find anyone these days taking, let's say, 600 milligrams of Wellbutrin. So I basically took Wellbutrin for depression. I mentioned, I think, in my previous video, and this is a long time ago I did this video, so my memory is a little bit rusty, um, but I believe I was explaining how depression, in my understanding, can to an extent mimic ADHD, particularly if you have the more fatigued type of depression or but you just can't muster up the enthusiasm or conviction uh, to kind of power on through life. Unlike uh, Nico, as I mentioned, that the, the two psychiatrists I've seen in my life have both said that my depression is dysthemia. Dysthemia is, um, I think it's a misnomer to call it mild depression. I, I would refer to my depression as mild but very sticky. 
it's hard to get rid of. It never gets that bad. I've ne I can't relate to the experiences of people who've been bedridden with depression or they can't hold down jobs with depression or they can't get a job because of their depression or they're actively suicidal or they're cutting or whatever. Thank God I've never experienced any of that stuff but depression I can talk about. So that's the reason I started taking Wellbutrin. Now, Nico asked me why did I go off it and why did I come back on? So there's been another drug journey in the intervening period. The reason I went off it and my, this is just my personal advice on the matter, which is why I made that not a doctor disclaimer. So I was taking 300 milligrams worked up from 150 and I was absolutely loving Wellbutrin. The way I see it, and I'm going to write a blog about this topic uh, one day because I think it's a interesting thought if I can say so myself. I feel like different there are different paths out of depression for different people. Wellbutrin to me is the very active path. Wellbutrin is, as far as I know, pretty much the only medication of its kind on the market. It's a norepinephrine and dopamine reuptake inhibitor or an NDRI. It doesn't work on the serotonin system. The classic first line medications most folks with depression take are, of course, the SSRIs, the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, and the SNRIs, the serotonin and norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors. Serotonin, to me, represents the kind of calming path out of your depression, right? When I, when I took took Lexapro and that's what happened. I went off Wellbutrin, I took Lexapro for the best part of a year and I'm currently just finishing my tapering off of Lexapro as I start Wellbutrin. SSRIs to me feel like kind of the the soothing pass out of depression. It's kind of like a chemical hug saying everything's okay, everything's going to be okay, relax, it calms down your nervous system and I think that's amazing. Well, Butrin is, very, is a very different medication and from my perspective, having taken the drug, a very different feeling. If SSRIs are kind of, everything's gonna be okay, relax, be calm, while well, butrin is like, boom, if you're lacking energy, if there is something uh, you're struggling with that's standing, that's causing you to be depressed, here's a bunch of energy that you might be lacking to go and fix those things. When I started well butrin at 150 milligrams, I was like flabbergasted it. I think the first day that I took it, I signed up for the gym. I, I went through like a month of my to-do list. It was possibly the most productive day of my life. And then with 300, the same thing. And then the nice thing is that after a week, that kind of unsustainable high mellows down and you get to a more sort of sustainable level of energy that you might have been lacking due to your uh, depression. I made this video not to talk just about Wellbutrin but to talk about my experience of adding caffeine on top of Wellbutrin which was the dumbest thing uh, possible and why I had a medicine that was working very well for me and I still managed to screw it up because you know what can I say um, sometimes people do stupid things right so I was taking my 300 milligrams of Wellbutrin before doing that when I was back in the self-medicating phase of depression, I was a huge caffeine consumer. And at some point I, sw I swapped over to caffeine pills, right? The most embarrassing, ridiculous vice out there possibly. When I got to my 300 milligrams of Wellbutrin, I was so happy at my level of uh, functionality and productivity. And I just felt like I could sort of, not in like a manic way, but I was kind of like, wow, this is amazing. Let's like take this as far as it can go. You can probably see how the story ends. I reintroduced my caffeine pills on top of the Wellbutrin and then stuff went to shit. These are medication, these are things that I would not advise mixing. Now the official medical advice if you go to your psychiatrist, at least what mine told me is that you can have caffeine in moderation, right? That's what your doctor will probably tell you. But I found it just way, way too much stimulation. The point at which I decided to um, asked my psychiatrist about coming off Wellbutrin. I remember the day very distinctly. My wife and I were invited to a friend's Thanksgiving party and uh, she has a dog. And I'm scared of dogs since I was a kid. I had some experience. It's in my subliminal memory. I really wish it wasn't the case, but that's how it is. I made my inquiries. I'm like, what kind of dog do you have? Blah, blah, blah. When we got to the place and I saw the dog, I was so paralyzed by fear. Now, my fear of dogs isn't so extreme that I generally 
generally avoid going to people's houses if they have dogs. I would say I'm just uncomfortable around dogs. But at this point in time, my anxiety because of the Wellbutrin plus the caffeine was so prodigiously high that I was just like stuck in the car. I was literally sitting in my car outside of this person's house, looking at the dog, way too petrified to go in and also incredibly embarrassed because my wife was inside and everyone was like, why isn't uh, Daniel coming to the Thanksgiving party? So that was the point where I was like, this anxiety is out of control and let's try an SSRI. And then my psychiatrist took me off Wellbutrin and put me on to Lexapro. And eight months later, I'm gone off Alexapro and I'm going back onto Wellbutrin. I feel like as this is, you know, a mental health video, I may as well, if, if you want to know the whole story, Lexapro I found good, but it was like the opposite of Wellbutrin. I was get energy from uh, coffee again. So ironically, I sort of ended up back where I was in the first place. What I'm trying on my second go at Wellbutrin is a zero caffeine policy. I'm not consuming any caffeine. Now there's a couple of reasons. Firstly, in my experience, and this is why I'm making this video, I caution Wellbutrin people against caffeine. What I found was that the effect was really, was really magnified. I wasn't like popping, you know, 10 caffeine pills a day. I was, I think, taking the equivalent of two cups of coffee, but that on top of the Wellbutrin just like set my nervous system on fire in a really bad way and just caused my anxiety to be completely out of control. The second thing I would say about caffeine and why, so that's reason one why I'm not, why I'm completely avoiding caffeine. And by completely avoiding, I mean everywhere caffeine is, which includes, of course, caffeine pills, but also coffee, tea, green tea, matcha, energy drinks, you'll see caffeine thrown into even some painkiller medications. So I'm going zero, no caffeine. The second reason that I think is really important is, and this is just sort of my opinion about the matter, it's very hard to know what's working when you're combining prescription medications for depression slash energy with self-medication like caffeine, right? And that was sort of, I would, I reached the point that my 300 milligrams evidently I found that it wasn't working quite well enough. It was great, but I need, I wanted that extra energy, motivation, focus, whether that was sensible or not is a separate question. But in any event, I would rather at this point go back to my doctor where I was at that point in time and say, look, 300 is great, but you know, I can, I feel I'm not quite there. Now I have a friend um, who is taking Wellbutrin, 300 milligrams plus Vyvanse, plus Prozac, if Kim ever watches this, uh, she knows uh, who, who I'm talking about. So those kind of combinations are things that doctors will do, obviously it depends on your prescriber, whether it's a family doctor or a psychiatrist and their level of comfort. But I'm just saying that rather than try to, if you find that you're well, well butrin at 300 milligrams, it's just not quite working well enough and you feel like it's working well, but not quite well enough, that's a great moment after giving it a month, whatever, to, to see how it really works. But that's a great opportunity to discuss with your provider what the other options might be, whether it's adding stuff on top of the Wellbutrin, trying a different medication, etc. And I really regret, instead of simply going to my doctor at that point, being like, well, you know what? Caffeine pills are the answer. I'm just gonna like throw caffeine pills on top of my Wellbutrin. And man, that was where it all went, uh, it all went south. So that's my little mental health uh, video for the day. Uh, thanks for the email, Nico. It really, really uh, encouraged me. And it, it couldn't have come at a better time. I'm literally on two weeks of Wellbutrin and I'm almost off Lexapro. I'm ta I've been tapering five milligrams a week and I'm down to, I think my last, oh, my last Lexapro pill is actually gonna be tomorrow. I'm excited to be trying this again. I really, really liked Wellbutrin. The, the moral of the story, the point I'm trying to get across here is, I screwed up by adding um, over-the-counter stimulants in the form of caffeine pills on top of my Wellbutrin, and I recommend not doing that, firstly. And uh, But if you are in my situation where you found the Wellbutrin working 80% well, rather than try to do something stupid like what I did um, with the caffeine, uh, go back to your doctor and have a conversation, and they might have ideas, as I said, for alternative medications or supplementary drugs. Hope that was useful. Uh, thank you for watching, and as I mentioned at the start, do feel free to uh, reach out to me using the contact tab and uh, wishing everyone working on their mental health going through the long and sometimes tedious process of figuring out what medication or medications work best for you. Wishing you success.